You are listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. Welcome back. Welcome to a fresh week. I'm so glad that you're here and that we're spending this time together. And if this is the first time that you're tuning in, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me in the show, and I hope that you are doing a deep dive into all the amazing guests that we've had over the years, because man, there are a lot, and we have really run the gamut of topics. But we always seem to come back to motherhood and finding balance and and how how being a mom, how hard that is, but how there are things you can do to make that experience more full of joy and less full of chaos and stress. And my guest this week is absolutely in alignment with that. Her name is Sarah Bivens. She's a mom, a wife, a balanced lifestyle coach, and the host of the Balanced Motherhood podcast. And through her work, um, she has just learned so much. She's learned so much through her own life and having this heightened sense of self-awareness. And then to be able to turn that Uh, into a source of healing for her clients, um, I think it's just really remarkable. And she's sharing key questions that you can ask yourself today that are going to spark that self-awareness in yourself and that creativity in yourself. And really, I feel like when women realize that they're not victims of their circumstances, they don't have to be resentful. They don't have to put themselves last. It's a choice. Uh, when you really bring in that self-awareness by asking these key questions, you can really do anything with your life. And, and so I'm really excited and fired up to share you know, the, the information that Sarah shares on the show so that you can absolutely go into your day after you listen to this and, and change your life. Do these small things that turn into habits, that turn into a new life for yourself. It's absolutely possible. And, and I really want everyone who is a mom or soon to be mom, or even if you have a 15 year old to hear this because it's important. And I think a lot of us are, are stressed. We're at our limits. Um, and so by reframing how we think about motherhood and what that experience should be or could be, um, it really changes. It changes everything. Um, so if you love this episode, I would appreciate it if you would share it with at least one friend. Um, if you're on Apple Podcasts, please hit those five stars. It takes three seconds. And uh, I hope you enjoy this episode with Sarah Bivens. This episode is sponsored by Motherhood Unstressed CBD. This is my line of organic, natural, USA-grown hemp that was specifically designed to help you, the mother, battle stress and anxiety naturally. And I'm excited to announce we just added two new CBD oils to the lineup. One is a 500 milligram natural flavor, and the other one, my personal favorite, is a peppermint flavor, and it is so delicious. It is so good, and it's going to leave you feeling calm, cool, and relaxed for your day. So head over to motherhoodunstressed.com and get yours today. Well, hey, Sarah, welcome to the show. I'm so glad that you're here, and uh, specifically to talk about something that I feel like is really at the core of of both of our missions in life, which is balance, motherhood, happiness, all of the things. So welcome to the show. Uh, Thanks so much for having me, Liz. I really appreciate it. And I'm such a fan of you and am inspired by your energy. I mean, to the point where I kind of cornered you at an event when we first (laughs) met in person. I was like, hi, you're Liz, right? I know you. (laughs) I loved it. That's never happened to me before. So I was like, wow, that's amazing. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. So here we are. (laughs) Here we are. And I'm I'm so glad that you did connect with me um, that night at that peanut event because I think, you know, I really don't believe in coincidences. And when I started checking out your podcasts, multiple podcasts, and just the work that you do and the content that you put out every day, I feel like it's it's so needed. And it's so rare that you find mothers doing this work just because we don't have the time. Um, But also, you know, people who are willing to put themselves out there and, and expose their own authentic truths to uplift and help others. So before we jump all into that, Why don't you take us back into how you even got into this type of work, um, supporting mothers through coaching and and just uplifting them um, in the work that you do? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So I I guess I will go back to 2013, I think is when a lot of things started to shift. You know, all these little mini seasons of myself and the, the multiple iterations, I think that's the one that had the biggest catalyst for where I currently am. And then of course it all builds upon itself, right? And everything's connected. But in 2013, my then boyfriend and myself, uh, Matthew, we moved to Atlanta. And in that time frame, 
it was kind of a nice little, I guess, quarter life, not crisis, but opportunity Mm. and transcendental identity thing of, you know, what's next? What am I going to create next? Because we were coming from a job that we both loved and now in a new city creating new things. So we moved jobless and just open for possibility. And that really was the the space for me to what would eventually be, and I now recognize as quantum leap Mm -hmm. into new understandings of myself, new growth, healing, et cetera. And coming to Atlanta, we found ourselves, you know, co-created, right? Because it's not an accident. It wasn't a coincidence. A community here in Atlanta called the Your Day Balance Game. And the Your Day Balance Game is a health and fitness platform powered by love and balance. So with health, fitness, love, and balance being the pillars of that space, uh, had me intrigued and interested into how I could lean into that. Because the fitness piece definitely had me. I was a former CrossFitter and just Mm -hmm. very into health and wellness. But to go into a more holistic, W-H-O-L-E approach to not just my physical body, but how am I relating to my life? How am I aware of my relationship and connection with myself, others, and life? And so I really started diving into that and tinkering with that. And over the next couple of years... I made the work career transition into becoming a coach. And that started first in the fitness aspect. So as a personal trainer, and that evolved over the next couple of years into lifestyle coaching is kind of how I see it and refer to it and balanced lifestyle coaching specifically. And as my own journey progressed, uh, so did how that showed up in my coaching. So, you know, you talked about the the work and the podcast, and I'm making sure that I am working on myself first and foremost. And that's where the lion's share of my energy goes, because I understand that everything I do is going to be an extension of that and be a result of that. So as much as I'm able to show up for anyone, whether that's clients or podcast listeners, et cetera, I know that that's going to be the result of how I'm showing up for myself. So like inside, outside, same sort of thing. So Mm -hmm. I make sure that I'm the ultimate guinea pig for anything that I'm doing or putting out there. And so motherhood being a big part of that, I became a mother in September of 2016. And I saw my messaging, I saw the energy, and I saw the people I was working with who I was naturally attracting, but then found myself being the most passionate about was mothers and how to to translate the things that I was learning and the, the the magic I was experiencing in my own life. How do I package that and share that with others? You know, understanding they can then take it and make it their own because we all have our own unique sense of that and experience of that. So, you know, just like anything you get really excited about, you want to share it with the world. So that's that was really a lot of the the inspiration for the podcast. So I have two podcasts. Doing it at home was inspired by our birth journey. And so that's a space where we share empowering information and resources and stories all around birth. And then Balance and Motherhood, my second solo uh, project, because doing it at home, I host with my husband, came about a year later. And those two have played off each other really well because, you know, there's this preparation for pregnancy and birth. And then there's life beyond that. Wouldn't you know, uh, we, (laughs) you know, we're not convinced of that during the pregnancy phase. Like all you're looking towards is that finish line of birth. And yet that's when it really starts. So Mm -hmm. that's a, you know, kind of weaved about roundabout way of coming to, you know, where I am currently, which is managing the podcasts, doing my one-on-one coaching with moms to, really connect them with their self-worth, their sense of identity, and to do that through the dance and the harmony of their their inner goddess, their inner badass, their whatever, you know, persona has come up for them, but to have those along with their roles and responsibilities and their passions, to have those just circulating in a really beautiful way. And of course, it's not linear, it's ebb and flow, and it's, you know, keeping you on your toes. Um, But how with the high energy and powerful support, accountability, and tools, how can you how can we manage that together as effectively as possible? 
Wow. I mean, so many things came up when you were speaking and you told your origin story so beautifully. Um, I think it's a really rare thing for a woman, especially in their 20s, to kind of have that uh, self-awareness and to kind of explore, you know, how do I want to be in the world? How do I want to go through life? How do I want to relate to myself and others? I mean, that's a really rare thing. I mean, have you always had a strong sense of self-awareness and curiosity or Um, I don't know, was it, I don't know, meeting your husband or moving to a new city? What really created that spark? Just because I'm just curious because it's just, it is such a a rare thing. You don't meet people who are so uh, curious about their own lives and, and how they're going through the world. That's big. And, you know, even you setting it up like that, I appreciate the recognition of that and the acknowledgement of that. It kind of gives me goosebumps. It can, it can even like well up the tear ducts a little bit because of how mm-hmm. powerful I think that is. And a simple answer would be yes, in the sense of this, this introspection, this sensitivity, this empathic nature that I th- believe has always been there as a part of my innateness. And yet, just like with lots of things like genes, we might be uh, prone to something, but those get activated, right? Like it can go one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And so for a time, I was going the other way with it in the sense that I, I felt my intense ability to feel or to intuit or to be aware of people around me, I felt it as an enormous curse Mm -hmm. and I didn't really know how to manage it effectively. And the manifestations of that were depression, antidepressants, uh, self, you know, mutilation in my teens and all, all of this stuff, right. That, that felt like it was, um, completely overwhelming. And like I said, when managed effectively and when nurtured, it's the great, it could be the greatest gift. But I think that's the case with a lot of us, right? Our greatest gifts can be our greatest downfall or weakness if we don't uh, love and nurture and water it in, in a certain way and, and have the support or in the like environments to support it. So I, I very much saw it going down that road and route. And it's, it was through a, a multitude of relationships, meetings, environments that allowed it to come out just a little bit more, a little bit more and become a little bit more effective. And it's, it's all the things it was, yes, meeting my husband, Matthew and being on this journey together and both being of like mind and supporting one another in our wholeness and fullness as individuals, and then coming together to create something amazing. It's the community that I mentioned here in Atlanta. It's the coaches and the mentors that I had and continue to have. And, it's, it's so many things and, uh, I don't take it for granted for a second. Wow. That's so, I mean, I was getting chills when you were talking. I feel like our paths are very, very similar. And, and even in the work that we're doing, it's very, it's in alignment. So mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just kind of, it's just making me smile because it's like, wow, you know, someone who was very sensitive growing up is now doing this work to uplift others and to, you know, engage in self-exploration. I think that that's, it's just fun when you kind of see a mirror of yourself out in the world. Um, I just love it. Um, mm. But, um, you know, going back to the work that you're doing, what is the most common problem that you see with the mothers, the women that you coach? Why do they typically reach out to you, at least initially? That's a great. Yes. So I would say in the door, it, typically around the topics of balance and identity. I think those are real. And and I would throw confidence in there too. Mm -hmm. So I would say those are the biggest things. It's how do I manage all these roles that I now find myself in? I don't even know how this happened. How did the past five or 10 years just kind of come upon me? And here I am completely responsible for the well-being and life of one human, multiple humans. And I'm in this relationship that I... I thought I knew what it was in the beginning, but what is it now with, with all of these life changes that we've had? Um, where am I at with my relationship with my abilities and my gifts and my, my greatness? Where am I at with that? And who am I even? Uh, who am I with my, my physical body maybe? And what, what does it look like for me to not even get back to who that is? Because you know that, that's a wonky concept of like mm-hmm. getting back to something kind of similar to having your pre-pregnancy body. It's how do I take all of that and, and continue to evolve? And what's the next what's the next phase? What's, what's the next season of me? And so I think that's the stuff that brings women in the door open to this conversation. And I think it comes from this power of us sharing our stories. That's why it's so 
important and powerful for me to, like I said earlier, be working on myself and be transparent with that process because then I think that's how we see each other, mm-hmm. right, in in our own journeys. And then you can identify with that, you can connect with that, and then you can be inspired to look at that for yourself. So that confidence piece, that identity piece, and the balance, I think, are the, the biggest things that have us um, tweaked um, with this experience of motherhood. Oh, absolutely. And I, I, it's interesting because I feel like our mother's generation and certainly the generation before them never really had a platform or had an opportunity to ask these questions. Maybe they were going through these and feeling the emotions and downing martinis to kind of dull the pain that they were going through, but there was never, there was no coaches for this. I mean, Mm -hmm. it was very, you just did what you had to do and push through your day and didn't complain. Why do you think that that's changing in the world? Ooh, I think it's so many things. I mean, one of which being the ability we now have to connect and hear other stories. So one of the beautiful aspects of things like social media and now this amazing platform of podcasting is hearing other stories. And in the way that I believe we used to be even further generations back past our grandmothers is the, you know, kind of fireside chats or as we'd be washing the clothes or whatever the things we were doing, raise, helping each other raise each other's babies yeah. in close proximity. I think this is now our version of doing that around the world. And that. I believe we have this innate primal desire to connect, right? And to share stories because that's the way we, we learn and, and, and gain lessons from one another. And then we're able also to, it's this beautiful exchange of energy. So Mm -hmm. I think just through the now sheer ability we have to do that, that that's increasing. And just the way that I mean, this could be a whole other topic in itself, but you know, the, the structure of household and kind of career paths and the way that women are choosing to family plan in different ways. I think all of that has impact as well in terms of, you know, you can do it any which way now that you want, you know, we, we just have so many more options in terms Mm -hmm. of how we want to become mothers, make money, have relationships, do marriage. And with that, I, I think just comes this now influx of, of connection opportunity. Oh, absolutely. And you're right. Like that could be a whole topic on its own. I mean, just the different structure that we have now, the opportunities. And I think for a lot of women too, it's overwhelming. You know, it's like, Oh yeah, you have all these options, but now it's like, well, what do I choose? How do I become happy in my life and be present and be, you know, quote unquote balanced in everything that I'm choosing and get to choose? Like it is a privilege. Um, So what, what do you, you know, you have your, your basic woman coming to you for help. She wants confidence. She wants to be more balanced. She wants to feel empowered. What are some tactics that you use to uplift her? Yes. So it's through ultimate space holding. I believe Mm -hmm. that anything like that is accomplished or achieved. And it's really about, you know, I think the, I think of a midwife, you know, um, you know, I, I used a midwife for our birth and one of the, what I understand, one of the tenets and kind of practices of midwifery is to basically do as little as possible in -hmm. the sense that they're there to support you in your process and they're not going to birth the baby for you. There's nothing they can tell you necessarily, Uh, you know, it's about that, that space holding. Um, so not to say I do as little as possible. It's actually (laughs) a lot of energy and it's a lot of, um, my own, personal reps, you know, repetitions in my own life that are necessary to be able to hold that space, to be able to hold that possibility for a woman to see her in a way that she may not have seen herself yet. Mm -hmm. And that looks like holding up a lot of epic mirrors. You know, we've kind of talked about the mirror thing and asking questions and giving the permission to to ask the questions one, because I think a lot of times there are questions we're not asking because we're not even giving ourselves permission to do that because of what that might mean, who might be slighted in that process. Like, oh, I'm not giving all this energy to my kids. I'm not giving all this energy Mm. to my job or my husband or my community or this and that. It has to all go to them. So to kind of break down those barriers that you can you can ask the questions and then walking through what might be on the other side of those questions, chances are are super scary because that's probably why you haven't been asking the questions and you haven't been able to do it on yourself, by by yourself, excuse me. You need that support. You need the village, right? To kind of comb through that. 
And so what might be on the other end of that is breaking down and recoding and reprogramming a lot of past beliefs and and thought patterns that you thought served you really well or were handed to you by um, by dogma or parents or culture or friends or past relationships, you might have to let go of some of those. Mm. And you don't have to, I guess. I mean, it's all a choice. But if you want to get, if you see your point A and you see your point B and you see now what's necessary, that's where I come in to assist in. This is where we currently are. Great. This has got us to where we are. Now you see where you want to go. Okay, awesome. How do we implement habits? How do we check in on your environments? How do we support you in mindset to move you to that point now that you have a team assembling myself and whoever else is going to support you in this process to get you there faster than you were, you know, if you were to be doing it by yourself. And some of those questions look like, you know, what even really matters to you? What do you value at your core? What makes you tick? What pisses you off? These are all really great things to ask to kind of get to that space where, Uh, A lot of us aren't taking that intentional time to be clear on those things. And so then we're kind of off navigating without a map in the sense that we're making these choices, we're, we're partnering up with people, we're having babies, we're taking jobs, and we don't really know why we're doing it. Yeah. Just because like society. Yeah. And so when you have an accurate map of, of the landscape that you're navigating, then you're going to be that much more effective, that much more powerful and empowered in the choices that you're making because you know they're coming from your authentic source. They're not coming from someone else because when you do that, then we know how resentment and victimhood can come into play. Right. So I would say that's the tip of the iceberg in those initial conversations. It's just really figuring out what you value most. And now a quick break with a word from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Best Fiends. And what is Best Fiends? Well, it's a puzzle game that you can play right on your phone. And it's really cool because you go through all these levels solving challenging puzzles that actually engage your brain. But it's also a casual game that anyone can play, and it's really, really fun. I just made it to level 30 and only started playing a few days ago, so that's a good indication of how fast and fun this game really is. And I'm glad that I can do something besides scroll mindlessly on social media or do a deep dive into my emails. That's never fun and gets old really fast. So engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Check it out. Man, so what happens when a woman who might have kind of unconsciously essentially gotten married and had three kids and now she feels trapped and resentful. Is there a way for her to kind of salvage those past decisions that she's now living with um, and find happiness? What, what can you do when you're, when the decisions that led you to where you are, aren't making you happy and you finally wake up and realize that, Oh my gosh, you know, this is the life that I've created mm. and I feel like I'm in a prison. Mm, hell yeah. Ooh, Ooh, that's so juicy. See, it's, <laughs> It's even evidence of my own personal shift that I can hear that scenario and not be like, oh, damn, I feel Mm -hmm. sorry for her. And instead I'm like, fuck yeah, girl, I'm so excited for you. (laughs) Such a great opportunity that you have now because now you have the awareness, right? The, The veil has been lifted, the wool is off the eyes and you can see now, yeah, this choice led to this choice led to this choice and here I am. And one thing that really got me all jazzed about myself and my process was seeing my own examples of that and thinking, wow, if I was able to create all that shit without intention and without this new set of tools that I have and this current understanding of myself and also humbled to the fact that I'm sure there's a version of me waiting where I'm going to look at me now and be like, wow, I didn't know this. Um, But to appreciate that I could be the creator, I could be the Uh, manifester of these things now with more effective strategy, think about what I could create. Mm. So instead of this thing of these things happened to me instead, wow, I have immense gratitude for the things that I was clearly keen on experiencing and learning about and from. And so now I can take that and I can move into this next thing that much more wiser and that much more aware of myself and what I am creating. That's beautiful. And I think that that is absolute truth. I mean, we are always creating whether we're aware of it or not. And so to to have the rose-colored glasses off and to be able to direct 
your ship in any way you choose. I think that that's, that's incredibly exciting. Mm, It is. Yeah. Wow. So, um, another big part of what you do and the work that you do is to help women have a more orgasmic experience in life. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that and what you mean by that? Cause I found that of course, very intriguing. Yes. So, you know, you asked the, the question of what gets women in the door. And so those things of balance, confidence or identity, you know, that comes up. And then I, it is, it is like a science. The time frame is always different because every woman is so different, but inevitably the conversation of sexuality, sexual expression, our past beliefs or the kind of programming we received around sexuality comes up because it's so connected to everything. And it's so you know, obviously a big part of becoming a mother. And Mm -hmm. so then what does that identity, what does that relationship to sexuality and sexual energy look like after motherhood? And so for me, what it looks like to be orgasmic, to be turned on is a so much broader view than sexual intercourse or even any physical sexual encounter or interaction. It is, it's an energy, you know, sex, sexual, expression is energy, just like, you know, food has energy to it. Our thoughts have energy. Well, sex is energy. And how can we have a a powerful relationship to that and see how by tapping into that creative life source womb energy, you know, to not to get too woo woo for a second, but how can we tap into that and allow that to influence every aspect of our life so that we're having, you know, life orgasms, Mm -hmm. um, not just, not just a physical experience of it, but how can you move in that, in that space? And how can you allow that to be inspiration for the things that you do, how you connect with others, how you even mother. So that's a little bit of what that looks like for me and, and just the possibility, right. That I hold for women if they are interested in that for themselves. I love it. I love it. And I think that you're so spot on. It's not woo woo to me or the audience (laughs) at all, because it is, it's such a, it's one of the seven chakras that we have Mm -hmm. in our bodies, that creative um, chakra that is just expounding creative energy into the world. And I feel like if that is shut down because of religion or, you know, dogma, cultural upbringing, um, you're really, really missing out on, on a beautiful, beautiful life. And and you know who knows what you could create or the impact that you could make in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. So what are what are some of the ways that you help women tap into that energy source and to feel okay with it and not ashamed of it and uh, have fun with it? Yeah. Oh, that's so great. So it's also interconnected and even starts back with that values conversation because when you are more clear on who you are and you're excited about who that is, then you've now automatically created the space for some of that orgasmic energy to show up. So Mm -hmm. diving deeper into the conversation of, okay, this is what matters to me. This is who I see myself being. And this is who I see myself becoming and stepping into. Ooh, okay. Now, how do I get excited about that? And how do I own that? And how do I share that with others? So there's that piece of it where you're, we don't even talk about sex necessarily, and yet it's already creating the space for that orgasmic energy to flow. And then when we do get a little bit more specific, it's like, what were those formative thoughts, experiences, et cetera, around sexuality, around sexual expression that have kind of brought you to where you are currently in terms of whatever shame, guilt, judgments there Mm -hmm. are. And how do we swap those, literally replace those out with truths, you know, not the stories uh, that we've had ourselves convinced of, whether that's that we're not in control of our sexual power, that we don't deserve sexual pleasure and or uh, enlightenment or, or joy. You know, how do we swap those out, you know, slowly but surely? And, you know, part of this entire process is is the faith, trust, and surrender piece that it does take time to shift some of this stuff. Like think about the decades it took for us to lay these things down. You know, it's not going to happen overnight. There is no quick fix for virtually anything like that. So all along, uh, um, what's what's the word that I want? Kind of uh, impressing the idea that... uh, it's, it's about the long game. It's about sustainable 
uh, growth and shift here. So remembering that along the way to kind of give ourselves the, the grace and space and to process. Yeah. Because I, t- I think too, like for a lot of women, it is embarrassing or, you know, they feel like they shouldn't be having feelings if they're like bored in their marriage or they're bored with their husbands or partners. And it's like, it's really, it's an interesting conversation to start having with yourself. You know, why am I feeling this way? Or, you know, could there be another way? Does marriage have to be the death of sex in your life? Mm. I mean, it, it so doesn't have to be. Right. Um, and so, yeah, but I, I totally agree. It's not, it's not an overnight process. And I think a lot of people too probably feel too scared to uh, talk to their friends about this or their family for fear of judgment or, um, yeah. I mean, so when you interact with these women and they're starting to explore I don't know, different ways of being in their marriage or just enlightening that part of their bodies that maybe they've never really connected to. Yeah. Um, what are some, some tactics that they can use in that realm? Ooh, that's great. So, I mean, it's going to be so different for each woman, but some of the things yeah. that come up are just in the way that you relate to how you move your physical body. So just from the physical aspect of it, how you relate to your physical body, how, what's your self-talk like around your physical mm. body? You know, that being a, a big part of how we connect sexually is our, is our physical body. So let's look at that relationship. Let's look at how we can grow in that through, through affirmation, through movement of your body, through loving it the way that it and you deserve to be loved. How do we create intimate and empowering conversations with you and your partner or partners around, around love and intimacy and sex? So, you know, creating the space for open sharing and non-judgment of, of past experiences, of fears, of, you know, the, the real and the raw. How do we practice that more and more and equip ourselves for that so that each time maybe it's a little bit less, you know, anxiety ridden, it's a little bit less fearful. So, you know, the, the practice of that. And those are some of the biggest things that come up for me right now. And then, you know, even down to ground level kind of habits, uh, journaling, meditation, all ways to kind of process and get out the stuff that mm-hmm. might have, might have, found itself in your body and lodged and become uh, stagnant and dormant, you know, that from a past thing or a past belief, you know, how do you, how do we move that? So some of that, you know, comes to mind when I think about how, how we work to shift that. I love that. And I think that that's super practical. I mean, it sounds very like, oh, I got a journal, I got to meditate, but it helps. It works. And like, like energy is always flowing, right? Mm. We're always flowing. We're always in flux. And so you don't want to have anything stagnant. I fully believe like that's where disease sets in. Mm-hmm. That's where, you know, any kind of illness can, can grab you. Um, have, I'm curious though, have you ever done um, Kundalini yoga? I am familiar with it and tapped into it a little bit in terms of conversations with people, but I don't, I don't think I've actually sat down and had like a Kundalini yoga session, but I've heard such amazing things and I'm pretty sure it's, it's in my future. <laughs> I know me too. If, if I ever find a good one in Atlanta, we should definitely go. Awesome. It's all about, for those listening, it's all about awakening that part of you. And, and really like, I guess it's, it's an all body high just from breathing and it's supposed to be amazing. So mm. check it out. It might yeah. be in your town. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I've loved this conversation. I really, really have. I knew I would. Um, do you have one major takeaway? I mean, I know we've talked about everything. What's one takeaway that you want to leave the listeners with today? I think it goes back to that ability to create and that you have total ability to create and paint on the canvas that is your life in terms of what you experience, what shows up, you know, we, we have ultimate influence over that experience. And that was something that I did not get (laughs) a long time ago. It took me a while to gain a grasp of, and even still today, something might trip me up and throw me off for a second. And I choose to forget that that is the truth that I I have the ability to influence how I'm experiencing my life. And so I, I think just cracking that door a little bit to that possibility opens up so 
much in terms of what you can now look at, how you can look at it differently, and that you don't have to live into any box or template that you thought you might have had to at at one point in time. And I'm in the constant kind of hamster wheel, if you will, or inquiry or cyclical thing of having a belief that I thought was it, right? I thought it was absolute truth or I thought it was principle and I've just had it completely shattered. Mm. And then I've had to look at the pieces of it and see what then I'm going to create next. And I guess I want to leave with that we all have that and to shift that from a, a downfall, a breakdown instead to a possibility for breakthrough and this really epic opportunity, because that's the only way that we're going to grow and evolve is through those beliefs, shattering, being reworked, being rewired. And that's such a beautiful human ability that we have that the, uh, the rest of the animal kingdom does not have. And so to just look at that as a beautiful gift that you can change up those things, you can change patterns and mindsets and beliefs is, is really beautiful and magical. So to just embrace that and embrace the breakdown. (laughs) I love that. I love that. And I I truly believe it is a strength. You know, when you remove the ego and you're saying, you know, you say to yourself, Hey, I thought this one way, I learned a new way. And now I'm going to go this way. That is really, really beautiful. Like you said, it's beautiful. And when people can be flexible like that and can move with new information, um, I think that you're really unstoppable and you're really, um, just infallible, honestly, mm. when you, when you get to that point. Mm. Um, okay. So I do have some rapid fire questions for you if you're ready. Ooh, yes. <laughs> Balanced motherhood is. What you make it own and love. Mm. I'm grateful for. Ooh, my, so much. I want to list a million things. My, my family, my health and my ability to dust myself off and keep moving. Oh, I love it. And what's something that you've learned in life that you wish someone would have told you earlier on? I think it ties in with my takeaway a little bit in the sense that, of course, it went the way that it went and that's the divine, you know, timing and flow of all of it. However, it would have been nice to hear a little bit earlier on that, I'll put it this way. I could have given away my V card much earlier and I'm not talking about my virginity. I'm talking about the victim card. Oh, I love it. I, I totally thought you were talking about virginity. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gotta, you know, gotta keep it fun and cheeky, but the victim card that I, mm. I could have given that up much earlier and had a, had a different experience. Had I done that, I was, I was very committed to that role and I was very committed to owning it and being really great in it. And that no. I didn't have to do that. Uh, you know, it's just something I would gently, you know, put my hand on younger Sarah's shoulder and let her know that. Um, but, she, but she had to learn in her own ways. <laughs> yeah. Did you know when, when you were playing victim that you were playing victim or what, were you unaware? I was unaware for a yeah. very long time. I don't think I truly, truly became aware until like <laughs> maybe like eight years ago, honestly. Um, I thought it was my right. It was kind of like a little badge of honor. Look what life has done to me. Look what my parents have done to me. Look what, look what's happened to me. You know, I'm special. I'm different. I'm unique and deeply wounded and no one can understand this. I was really, I was really committed to that. Girl, we are the same person. This is so (laughs) freaky. (laughs) I love you. Um, Okay. So where can our listeners, and I ask that because I feel like so many people are completely unaware that they're victims. I think that that's a really important topic to, to end on, you know, wake up if you've been feeling resentful or, you know, sad and it's because of someone else or something outside of you. I really want to come back and just say, remember Sarah and what she just said right here. It's so, it's life changing when you have that realization. It really, really is. Mm-hmm. Um, but going back, where can everyone find you, listen to the podcast, find out all of the amazing work that you're doing in the world? Yes. Thank you. So sarahbivens.com is my website. I'm on Instagram, Sarah M. Bivens. And the podcasts, Doing It at Home and Balance and Motherhood are available in pretty much any podcast player. So uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, et cetera. I love it. Thank you so much for being on the show. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this. And uh, I know it's going to make an impact in the world. So thank you for being real and raw and 
uh, just sharing your light with the audience. Oh, thank you so much, Liz. You have been listening to the Motherhood Unstressed Podcast, and I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, if you love this episode, please share it with at least one friend. Tag us on your Instagram stories. That's a great way to support the show. Make sure that you're subscribed so that you never miss out on a morning meditation or on an interview with an incredible person doing incredible work in the world. Um, And if you haven't already, um, please hit those five stars on Apple Podcasts because it really does... Uh, boost the show's rating and just it gets the message out to more and more listeners so thank you